Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing. If you're new to the channel, my name's David, and I fish inshore and offshore here in the Panhandle of Florida, showing you what I do to find and catch fish. We got the Grady loaded up. We're heading offshore. We're going to target some red snapper, maybe some trigger fish, try to bring something home in the box, and we'll see you out there. All right, so what we got going on here, Ruth is over here working with a chicken rig, pulling up some small triggers. Hopefully we can get a couple keeper triggers that way. Meantime, I've got these two three lines out there with some frozen cigar minnows with an eight alt circle hook and 60 pound leader. So we're hoping that'll pull up our bigger red snapper while we work with this chicken rig. Oh, she's got another one. Oh man. Look what you got. All right, we're gonna put him in the box. You got him? All right. Oh man, what did you get? Trigger fish and a grouper. Here, pull this over. Check it out. Trigger fish and a grouper. All right, look at that. You don't see that every day. Oh, here we go, here we go. Got him, got him. Oh man, got him. Oh, Steven, we got the big one. All right, well this is on the frozen cigar minnow in one of these three lines. I just put a new fresh bait out and something grabbed it right off the bat. Better keep an eye on the other one. All right, that's a good snapper, a good snapper gonna be a keeper. Look at this one. All right. Good old red snapper. First keeper in the box. Since there's three of us today, we can keep six. This makes number one. It's about four pounds, 19 and a half snapper. Obviously not the biggest one out there, but he's our first one of the day and he's gonna go in the box. All right, how I'm hooking this cigar minnow for these free lines, I'm kind of going through the eye. They're still a little bit frozen, but this is a good way to do it anyway. Go through the eye like that, and then I, then I kind of go through the back, kind of getting as deep down as I can to the middle of the fish. And that'll kind of give you a good hold. Plus, with this hook being further back, you know, if that fish short strikes it, he'll still get hooked. All right, well, I just kind of went to check this one. See if I had any bait, but I've got a fish on. Oh, man. We didn't have any idea he was hooked. I don't know how long he's been hooked here. There was no indication on the rod. Of course, I probably just missed it. Man, he's got some good weight to it. All right. All right, let's get him up. Okay, sorry. Keeper snapper number two. Look at this one, everybody. Another red snapper. He's definitely bigger than the other one. Man, we were just about to leave. And I was just reeling these in to kind of check them, possibly reel them in to move, and this one shows up. So, I mean, we're showing some good marks on the depth finder. We just weren't getting anything for a while, but hey, this changes things. All right, let's get a measurement on him and get him in the box. He's an eight pounder. Nice red snapper. Oh, 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 got him. Oh man, bringing him in. He got some weight to him. Got the, oh, oh, get him, oh man. He's taking it out. Oh man. Comes a little more weight to it. Hopefully it's our keeper trigger. Oh man. Let's see. I will measure him to see. I'm not sure. He is a little bigger. Yeah, check him out. Alright, so. Oh man. Ow! Shit, he just hit me. Almost made it. He's 14 and three quarters. But man, I was measuring him and he 
bit me right in the middle of my finger. Let's get him back, let him grow a little bit bigger. Look at that. All right, got him. Got him, got him, got him. Man, hopefully this is snapper number three. I'm not used to getting able to keep more than two. I got my family on the board, so we can get six today. This feels like a good one. Here he comes. Good color. Good color. I don't think he's bigger than that last one. But he's a keeper. He's a little more looking at I'm not sure. I couldn't tell. He's not very good. All right. Good old snapper. All right. Let's get this one in the box. This makes number three for us today. Four pounder. He's gonna make our third one in the box for today already. About 19 and a half. All right, here's another big one. All right, we're gonna go ahead and head on in. This was just a morning trip to kind of get out here and see what we could catch. Caught a lot of trigger fish and those really nice snappers. Those will be good on the dinner table. So we'll see you at the house. So we're going to go ahead and clean up this big old snapper here. First step is to go ahead and kind of make a slit behind the head, just like any fish. And you'll feel these gills, they kind of have an irregular shape. So I just try to find that little spot right behind them. And I try to kind of get over this way to the head because there is some meat right there. And then you can just kind of go down till you get all the way to the backbone. Then you're going to go ahead and make your slice through the skin. You're not going to try to go all the way through to the backbone just yet, but just kind of making just an indentation and just a little cut through the skin. I always start at about where the tail meets the body and just go ahead and point your knife in and run it along what would seem like backwards up the back of the fish seems to be the easiest way to do it until you meet the spot that you cut earlier. Now you're just gonna follow the backbone and the ribs that come off the backbone. Try to get your knife to lay flat on top of them. All the way till you get to the backbone. Now once I get to that spot, what I, what I do is get my knife on top of the backbone here, go through the whole fish, and go ahead and cut the tail section off like that. The reason I like to do that is because getting this fillet off these ribs right here can be quite tricky. I mean, it's just easier if you have more flexibility with this part of the fillet. So then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to kind of go over these ribs and you'll feel them, just kind of let your knife ride on top of them. Kind of making a little arc over top of them. And once you get sort of where you can start to see the skin, the back side of the skin, then you can just take your knife and go following the top of the ribs right here all the way down to where your knife stuck through earlier. And you've got a nice piece of filet, really not missing any meat. And you can kind of see, I'll kind of get down, you can see how tall that is. So when you're cutting, you have to go all the way up and over. So that's a that's can be probably the trickiest part, to me anyway, of cleaning these big snapper. Next, I just go ahead and kind of clean it up a little bit before I take the skin off. Just try to get off any of this excess stuff that you're not gonna wanna eat. Then, to get this skin off the filet, 
get it as close to the board as you can and just start there at the tail kind of holding it with your left hand go ahead and get it started once you've kind of got it started a little bit what instead of holding it like this the whole way sometimes that i'll go through the skin backs in it that way but once you've got it started i like to go ahead and follow along with the back of my hand just putting some pressure right behind the knife following the knife as i go for two reasons it's going to keep a lot of pressure down on this skin to keep it from sliding also you can sort of feel how you're doing like are you leaving too much skin too much fillet um, too much meat on this and you can feel that as your left hand is going so that's looking pretty good right here now you're going to have to kind of clean out a couple of these bones and if you're going to have any bones left which you most likely will they're going to be in this section right here and to about right here of the middle where the backbone was so what what i like to do is make sure there's not any right here go ahead and do a shallow v right along where that backbone was on either side that's going to cut out all of those bones so you can see these two bones three four bones right there and that's going to take all those bones out now for the other side it's just going to be the same thing just opposite and there you go two beautiful red snapper fillets so if you've seen my videos before where i clean fish you know i get this old ice chest here get some ice in it and that's what i kind of put my fillets in till i'm finished cleaning all the fish go ahead and get some ice on top of those just to keep your fillets as cold as possible till you can get them inside and in the fridge or for or you know if you're going to go ahead and cook them all right so we're going to go ahead and clean this white grunt pretty much the same way it's just going to be a little bit easier just so there's not much fish to deal with but find that gill plate run it as far forward as you can just following where that gill plate meets the body then you're going to kind of start at the tail make that little slit through the skin once you get your meat cut from the ribs and and to the backbone find your backbone have your knife go right on top of it stick it through the fish and then just cut the rest of it off now same sort of deal going over these ribs these guys have a decent amount of rib cage as well All right let's get the fillet off the skin there we go nice little fillet now look how good that is now this may be a fish it's you know it's a grunt some people may not keep just because they may think it's inferior to snapper and all those kind of stuff but look at this meat it's actually got less bloodline um, than that snapper does i know those snapper are a lot bigger but still that's a good looking fillet all right two nice looking grunt fillets you can see very little bloodline in these fillets and we're actually going to make uh, grits and grunts out of these it's a old florida recipe from key west and uh, we're going to go ahead and get that going and we'll see you in the kitchen. All right, we're going to go ahead and cook up that grunt that we caught today. And the recipe that we're going to be using is a recipe called grits and grunts. And it's a dish that became popular in Key West in the early 20th century. All right, so first off, just to go over our ingredients, we have this beautiful grunt fillets right here. And for our spices, we've got some parsley, some thyme, some scallions. We're going to be using some lemon juice, some garlic, olive oil, butter, salt and pepper, cayenne pepper, paprika. And for our grits, we're going to use obviously our grits and some cheddar cheese and some milk. All right, so we had to pause our video for a few minutes. I was chopping up my parsley, turned my head to talk to the camera, and kind of got a little lazy with my knife and got a little cut on my finger. So we're back at it. So what I've done in the meantime, I've chopped up this parsley and I've prepared some of this thyme. And if you're unfamiliar with thyme and the way to kind of get that ready to, to use, basically it comes on, a, on a, a hard stalk like this. And you just kind of take um, this stalk and just kind of run your fingers and you just pull those leaves off like that. And then you can discard the stalk. 
Okay, and so the process for this uh, recipe is basically we're gonna build a marinade, put that fish in it, let it sit for 20 to 30 minutes. Then we're gonna uh, pan fry it on our cast iron skillet over here. Meanwhile, we're gonna be cooking our grits. And we're also gonna make a sauce so that once we've put our fish on top of our grits, we're gonna add this sauce on top as a final ingredient. So our first step in our marinade, we're gonna do a third of a cup of this olive oil. Next is a tablespoon of lemon juice. Now you can certainly use fresh lemons. We found this um, kind of ready to go jarred type lemon juice a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's always on hand, you know, if you want to use it for something else as well. And then we're going to use two cloves of garlic. I just kind of eyeball that. That's probably one, two right there. Now we're going to put our chopped up fresh spices in here. This is going to be a, about a tablespoon of parsley and about a teaspoon of thyme. And then we're going to put in two teaspoons of paprika. Now our recipe calls for one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Now as a lot of you guys probably know that's pretty hot. So I'm going to take a little bit easy on it maybe do like three quarters of a teaspoon. We can always add that later once we do a taste test. And then we're just gonna put a little black pepper in. All right, kind of give all that a mix here. And then just add this lovely fish. I just wanna point this out again. Now this is grunt, white grunt. And you see this very faint bloodline. So this is some really excellent fish. All right, now once we got our fish, I'm just gonna kind of toss this marinade to fully coat this fish. There you go, looks lovely already. Now I'm gonna put a lid on this and put this in the refrigerator for 20, 30 minutes. You probably don't wanna go too longer than 30 minutes because it does have this lemon in it and lemon left on fish or shrimp or any kind of seafood um, too long, it'll actually start to cook your fish. So we're gonna go ahead and get that in the refrigerator and start to work on our grits. Okay, for our grits, you can just sort of prepare that to your grits um, serving instructions. I'm gonna go ahead and do four servings. What I've done, I've, I've put three cups of water and I put my fourth cup, instead of using water, I used milk, just to make it a little more creamy, a little more richer. So we're gonna let that go get to a boil and then uh, add our grits. All right, so I've got my water and my milk boiling over here. So when I add the grits, I always like to use a whisk just to keep that grit from clumping, you know, as they go into that hot liquid. And just constantly stir while you slowly pour those, pour those grits in. All right, turn your heat down some so you don't want to cook it too fast. And that can sit for a while. You just kind of have to watch it, make sure it's not drying out. Um, but really, the longer you cook grits, the better. Now I'm gonna add the butter and the cheese a little bit later. All right, so while I've got my grits going, um, I've got the fish marinated. I wanna go ahead and get my final sauce ingredients. So that's all ready so that when we pull the fish off, we can kind of get it all put together quickly. So our first step is we're gonna take these scallions and we're just gonna chop those up. So to make the sauce, we're gonna put six tablespoons of butter in this small uh, saucepan. And then we're gonna get that melted and then add our rest of our ingredients and kind of keep that warm until we're ready to plate up our dish. All right, so I've got my butter melted, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the final ingredients for this sauce. That's going to be a tablespoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, clove of garlic, a little salt, and about a quarter cup of scallions. We're just going to put the lid on that, kind of keep it on low. So that's ready to go when ready to plate. 
All right, I've almost got my pan ready for the fish, but before I put the fish on, I'm gonna go ahead and put my butter in the grits. Now that's also gonna make it a little creamy too. All right, so our pan's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put this fish in. Look how lovely that looks first off. Man. All right, I always like to put my serving side down so that when I flip it, it's already ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and spoon the rest of this marinade over top. All right, so that's gonna go probably about two minutes per side. Uh, so it's been about two minutes. Let's flip that over. Yeah, that's what's great. Actually, I think this was our serving side right here. I got mixed up. I think that's the bottom, but that'll be okay. So we'll go about two minutes on this side. While that's going, our really our last step here, I'm gonna go ahead and put eight ounces, just a bag of this cheddar cheese in it. Just kind of mix that up. I like to use, I like to put the cheese in almost as my last step. It just seems to work better with the cheese grits. All right, so that was two minutes on that second side. Let's go ahead and get this off heat. See if we can try to do this without breaking it. All right, we're ready to plate this up. All right, so I'm gonna give this grits one last stir to make sure all that cheese is fully incorporated. Get our grits in first. This is gonna be a hearty meal right here. Look at all that. All right, second, let's get our fish. Final step. Just garnish with a little green onions here. All right, everybody, look at that. This is our grits and grunts recipe. So let's give this a try. All right, so who doesn't want to mix that sauce up first a little bit? Man. Man. This is one of the best recipes I have done on the channel. I will definitely leave this down in the description below so you can make this for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, I certainly appreciate you. So until next time, I hope to see you on another episode of Forgotten Coast Fishing.